Okay. Oh. Was the gap? Was it? Um, yeah. We're here today with uh, Gavin McKellar, and uh, he used to fly the Buccaneers. If I'm not mistaken. The SAF, right? That's right. Long time ago. Yeah. Oh. Uh, tell me, how was it? What was your experiences like in the boat? Um, I, I got it. <laughs> I'm going to say the buck must, uh, it's definitely the nicest aeroplane I've ever flown. So, I think one of the nicest things about it is that uh, it's all low level work. Mm. So, in your 20s, you've got this 55,000 pound beast strapped to you, and you're flying 200 foot, 100 foot, mainly 200 foot, 480 knots, and that's really a privilege. So uh, almost every, every sortie was a weapon sortie as well. You're going to deliver something. Hmm. at the range you know, or do in front of fueling or something interesting so it was, it was really really every sort of was really precious really nice cool cool can you tell me where you did your training for the bucks at yeah. uh, Waterkloof Waterkloof yeah so, cool. so what you do you come to the squadron and then uh, one of the guys would give you the subject one guy would give this technical another guy so the squadron taught itself okay you know. cool and uh, basically how did it work did you have to Work yourself up from Harvard's all the way to the Buccaneer. Yeah, yeah. Look, the SAF in those days, you'd go into Harvard's as a pupil. Mm -hmm. you know, something like six thousand people apply, sixty get selected, about thirty or so get the wings. Okay. You have two, two courses a year. I was two seventy eight. Um, start on Harvard's, then we went to Longobon and uh, Impalas, Italian Imp, okay. North American Harvard. And after that, then they stream you. So they stream you for transport, choppers, light aircraft, or what they call fighter line. I got the fighter line, going to do Mirage course, Mirage threes, and after that, then they uh, stream you again. So you go to F1 AZs, F1 CZs, or Buccaneers. Okay. You go straight from an M to a Canberra, then you go straight from an M to a Buck. You go through the, you know, through the Mirage course. Okay, so you, you'd have to follow all the different procedures. Yeah, that, that was awesome. that was the streaming or whatever. That was the way yeah. that you got there. Okay, and then uh, when did you qualify? Like on the Buccaneer itself? So I, I bought my logbook. <laughs> I can't remember. All oh, that's dates. all good. That's all good. So, that's quite a hefty book you got over there. I actually, just opened it on the first page because that was my first solo, uh, 29th of June, 1984. Wow. So that would have been the OC takes you up for a ride and you sit in the back. Yes. So you get used to the sound and yes. the thing moving or whatever, you know. Okay. But with a little simulator as well, like a little that, that's that you could move. Mm. So you practice all your procedures on the simulator, write all your exams, do all your tests. Yes. And then you uh, he takes you up, and then you can fly your first solo with a nav. Okay. And that's really cool. So now, from what I understand, when you actually go out on your own solo, you're doing it by yourself. There's no uh, no help from the back. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Mirage's had a dual seater, so you can have some help from the back. Pilot, yes. same thing, you know. Yes. But you have the back when you first solo, besides having the ride in the back to get the feel of it. Yes. But there's no stick or anything. Yes. You're on your own. So, what are you going to navigate in the back to help you? Yes. So, so it must have been a quite an experience having to go out for the first time. Yeah, I think. No. I think it is. Yeah. That's really, really cool. Any, any solo, I think, you know, first solo in a in a Harvard too. Is, one experience. No, I'm sure, I'm sure. There used to be a sock behind us, solo socks, so people know that you're solo and they just stay clear. Yeah. No, but well, that's really cool. Um, well, while you were in the SAF, did you actually uh, see any action? Yeah, we saw some action. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you can tell me about that? Ah, um, you know, the bucks were used for the big ops. Okay. Um, so, I remember the general telling us that the the, these are more worth in the hangar than they were flying. Okay. Just because their range mm. gave in flight refueling capability. Yes. And what so, was the range on these aircraft? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think I think I think my longest flight was two hour twenty low level around so from Bidercliff around Botswana to Grotis and Dago. Okay. Uh, and that's quite a quite a distance. I don't, yes. I don't know I don't know what it I can't think how many miles it is now. Yes, yes, no, that, that's, but, that's but, quite a quite low level. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big range. Yeah. Yes, yes. And, could, and all could, of us was that done at low level then? Yeah. Yes. So, so it's got a massive range at low level. Okay. 
Okay. We had wing tanks on and um, Bombay, Bombay tanks as well to get that type of Okay. So when you say low level, what, what was the flight levels uh, you fly at? 200 feet, sir. 200 feet? Ah, you do 200 feet. foot and then you'd go down to 100 foot for running to a target. Okay. For idea not screws, 200 foot, accelerate about 500, depending what you could get with the aeroplane. Mm -hmm. Aeroplane was a strict economy with it, was 540 maybe. But sometimes at a bit of a high level, you couldn't get uh, you know past like 520, okay. 100 foot, and then running 0.95. We were yes. limited. You get 0.95 here at the coast, but up uh, you know in, in, in the higher areas, it's a bit hard to get 0.95. Okay. Especially we got stores under the wings. So, did you guys ever operate these things off of the, the uh, flight decks like the, the British did? Nah, no. I wish. I'd love to have landed on one more yeah. than take off. But yes, yes. No, there were days of sanctions, so no one would get us. You know, we yes. didn't have any joint operations. I'd love to okay. have done a carrier take off and landing. But it's okay. designed for that, obviously. Yes. That's why it's got the folding wings. Yes. You see the size of that earlier, it's like this, you know. Yes. That's why it's got the blow system. Yes, yes. It's Can all, you tell me about the blow carrier. system? Yeah, well, the blow you see is on the leading edge here of the wing. You can, you can, you can feel it there. It's like a little slit there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's on the bottom of the tail plan as well to energize it. So what, what the blow does it takes um, thrust of the engine, thousand pounds if I remember right, of each motor. Yes. And then you energize the boundary layer. Yes. So by energizing the boundary layer, you can get more lift. Getting more lift, you can fly slower. Yes. So you, I, I can't remember the touchdown speed. Obviously, you'd work it out for for weight, but yes. it's around 120 knots or so if I remember right. You know. Okay. Uh, cool. Also, you also could take off. Obviously, blow would help you to take off. As well. And then, like, any emergencies, like, was the buck capable of flying on one motor? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Like, 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 would the like, procedures be there? Like most twins, um, you can, you can, it'll fly on one motor. You might have to get rid of some stores if you've got jettison stores underneath and that, you know. Yes. But with this, it's not a big swing or anything either. I mean, I never flew it on uh, the full engine failure. They simulate it, you know. Yes. But because the, the engines are so close to the body, it's not a big swing. Yes. Like if you had like a jumbo jet with an outer motor going, you know, it's much mm. more of a, of a kick. All these new triple sevens of the motors are so huge when you lose one, you know, yeah. you feel it. Eh? Yeah. But you wouldn't feel this that much being uh, so close to the center line. Yeah. But you can fly on one motor. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. That's really but you're cool. not going to go into sort you. Know, yes. You'll fly home, land safely. Okay, cool. And then um, tell me what speeds, all the different speeds, like what was critical speeds on this aircraft? I mean, I, I don't what remember. Did you push I, just, it at? I just remember 0.95 being your max. I think 540 knots uh, is the max. That's what you're too indicated. And I pro you probably get down to like 115 knots or so if you're light and uh, and with the blow system on for landing, you know? Okay. Uh, it's a five and a half G aeroplane. I think negative was two and a half. So like Mirage and Impala is a seven G um, you need like three and a half to do a loop or so. We used to do a loop on course on our, in our training just to give you confidence. Okay. Uh, the, the British band, they said it's too dangerous, not worth the risk. Yes. But the SAF, we did one loop just to a confidence we do that. Okay. It's quite yeah. tricky. It's not yeah. like an Impala, you can go loop all day. Yes, yes, yes. Well, then tell me, what was it like flying at low levels? Do you enjoy it? Was yeah, it? I, I really enjoy it. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the wonderful thing about a military aeroplane, you know, or a chopper or something. Yes. Flying low level is wonderful. It's very exciting. I mean, you get to see all the country around you. Yes. Flying down uh, valleys, through the Fish River Canyon, uh, following rivers, you know, through canyons. Uh, yeah, low must levels. Be, must be really I love awesome. Low, I love low level. Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, what was the lowest you'd push it? And this aeroplane probably, I don't think we went down to 50 foot, probably 100, nice and comfy. We might have gone under 50 at some stage, I can't remember. Okay. But the imp would fly between 20 and 50, which is very low. Yeah. A, a telephone pole is like 30 foot, so yes. 20 foot slow. Yes, that's very low. If you want to stay safe sometimes, then that's where you that's where you got to go. Yes. But I, I don't remember going under 50 foot on this one, maybe, but maybe 100 foot. I was reading something in the red flag where they said they were going down to 50. Okay. Like those guys. Must be a nicely planned, nice flat area, I guess. Yes. Yeah. That level of flying is tricky, you've got to get used to it, you know. Yes. Uh, 
there's a lot of obstacles to avoid the yeah and with even low level over the sea uh, you tend to fly into the sea so you have to be really aware yes. when you've got no, no reference yes. you fly into it you know yes, yes. it's like landing where there's no reference if you land at Roy Corp and that's like with the desert where there's no got nothing to give you height reference you generally land hard yes there was a drum there near the end of the runway so at least they could give you some dimension of how high you were okay 44 gallon drum yeah you. at least you know yeah well that's really cool well well tell me in your opinion was this a an effective aircraft extremely for, effective aircraft for what it was built for extremely i think you know i think it's a bit of an underrated airplane i think if some other countries had bought it and had used it uh, it would have been more recognized i think yes I mean, anyone who's flown or dealt with this airplane absolutely loves it. I never found anyone who said, you know, it was a lousy airplane to fly. Everyone who's flown it absolutely loves it, you know. Okay. So it was like an honor to fly. I mean, it's 1958 model. It's, I think it's, I think what it was built for, you know, low-level strike maritime. It's extremely, capable. extremely effective, extremely capable. Okay. I mean, it can be quite a weapon load under, this, uh, under the wings here. Yeah. You can put a nuclear warhead in there. Yes. Uh, it's it's a, it's a fantastic airplane. I mean, it's old. Mm. You know, it's not. Yeah. You know, not there's no GPS navigation system at a Doppler, but it's really nice to fly. And the, as a pilot, it's wonderful. You've got a navigator. Used to do all the charts. And yes. My navigator used to do all the radio work and everything. Okay. I used to just fly. You just flew the plane. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's super super nice. To fly. You're taking a parlor out at low level and you, your head's bumping on the cockpit yes. when it's hot, you know, because it gets really bouncy and rough. Yes, yes, Whereas yes, this yes. was so extremely stable. They called okay. it, the nickname was the Easy Rider. Yes. There's a nice sticker yes. the squadron had stuck, I think, on our lines, but yes. back in the slogan, Easy Rider. Easy Rider. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Uh, can you tell me about any of your sorties, like maybe your favorite one? Yeah, I don't know if I've got a... A, fa a favorite, but uh, in-flight recruiting was really nice to do. Okay. Yeah, it's quite difficult in the beginning. Yes. You tend to want to kind of poke the, you know, come in like this, and you kind of poke it and you miss it. Yes. Where you have to learn to fly through. You get focus on a point far away, and you fly through, and kind of with your peripheral, plug yes. it in. Yes. That was that was always challenging and nice. Yes. You but never had the problem with the the airflow of the aircraft pushing away the nozzle. No, but sometimes it, it would. To bounce around, or you could get the nozzle like this. Yes. But I never like tore it. They call it the panty because you can tear it, and then the the, the panty sticks around your inflight like you crack. You come over <laughs> yeah. this thing, then you got to wear it for a couple of days. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, no, I never did that. But yeah, I, they were they're all special sorties. We only got like uh, uh, eight sorties a month, okay. 12, twelve hours a month. Yes. Yeah, each one you enjoyed. I mean, I love the low level flying, flying on the coast. I guess some of the memorable ones are down the skeleton coast. Okay. We used to deploy to Rokop once a year and go look at the Russian fleet and the fishing fleets and that, you know. Yes. The fleet would come past and it would always often be a listening boat amongst us. The, one, the boat with no seagulls yes. was the one that the electronic people went on. Oh. We'd go take photographs of them and whatever. But flying down that coast is beautiful. You've got these shipwrecks there and yeah. flamingos and that. Uh, hole in the wall and that probably, probably those were the best sorties okay. down that Namibian coast low level down the beach oh, that's really really cool. nice. Crazy. flying down uh, past the finger of God it was used to still, we were still standing in those days yes. it was pretty fish of a canyon beautiful yeah oh, that's really cool so, um, after your, your time in the SAF, what did you end up doing? I went to, to the airline. You went to airlines? Nice. Yeah. Okay. So. Like, like quite a lot of guys. I guess the airline was a, a very much, I mean, the guys fed from the SAF to the airline. You know? Yes. So, you also went so into the airline. So, it was a normal progression, I think. Okay. And then My dad was an airline pilot. I wanted to be an airline pilot. Okay. To be honest, I didn't want to go to the SAF. <laughs> My dad said he's got no money. Uh, go to the SAF. Yeah. And uh, I'm not... I couldn't say I was really a military guy. Yes. But I really enjoyed it there. I really made some good friends. I got to fly these beautiful things. Where do you fly Mirage no, no. when you're 20 something years old? You no, know? That's, that's really, so really, it, really amazing. It, despite me, it worked out wonderfully. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So then you went to the airlines, and then what happened that side? You 
he ended up becoming captain. Yeah, yeah. I love the airline, you know. Um, I flew Airbus A300s in the beginning. Um, then I went on to Jumbo's first office. I've been like 10 years flying 747s. I mean, I like traveling, I like taking photographs, I like exploring, I like language, culture, and it yes. just fitted in so well with what I love photography, yes. music. You know, we had these like week trips everywhere. You go land in Zurich, you go skiing for like five days. Or That's really cool. Go to London and you go to watch shows and the Who and yeah, yes. it's just you got to see, it, you got to experience the world. Yeah. That's really cool. That's How many it. years were you with the with the airlines? Uh, like thirty five, I think thirty thirty three, something like that. Okay. I started in uh, seventy eight and I ended now in twenty twenty, so it's like forty three years. Wow. It's 42 years and probably 32 years or so in the airline. But really, really fantastic. I mean, fantastic cars, a fantastic airline. Yes. Extremely good training. Yes. Uh, very different to the military. You know, coming from this, uh, it's not very procedural. Mm. You know, an ILS and a letdown and all the procedures of airline flying are very different to military. This is daytime. Yes. Seat the pants. Yes. Uh, in the airlines, very procedural yeah. flying. But really, like, uh, made oh, that's good awesome. friends. Lifetime friends land up on the Airbus A350, which is yes. a fantastic yeah. modern piece of kit. That's awesome, that's awesome. Really How many awesome. hours did you end up getting on the 350? No, not a lot, 94, I think. 94, well, four, I, four, four landings. You got something. Four landing, four lack of landing. Oh, that's good, that's good. <laughs> Can you tell me about the, the, the air brakes? Um, they call them the, the barnyard doors. That's some nice sayings for this buck, you know. Okay. They call the cockpit a steam driven slum. <laughs> call those air brakes the barn doors. The barn doors. Yeah, because they're just so huge. Yes. Extremely effective. Okay. We used to do something called stop, stop, stop. So you would go along a bit of mirage behind you and you'd go along and you're doing, let's say, 500 knots and you close the thrust, pop that speed brake because it's at any speed you can do. And down at 300 knots and you'd uh, pop it back in and go because, of course, the mirage goes past. They can't yes. stop. And the, it would decelerate and push you into your straps. The deceleration was so good. Yes. So extremely effective speed brake. Okay. Um, from high level, if you pop that speed brake, it's like a parachute hanging out. Hmm. I can't remember the rate of descent. I'm thinking 24,000 feet a minute. You know, someone will have to check that. Yes. But it's a massive rate of descent at a very high speed. You know, it can go vertically down. Other airplanes can't do that because hmm. speed brakes, like a Mirage or... or or um, pilot speed brake are tiny little things. Mm. It's extremely effective. Yeah, like and you said, it's barn doors. <laughs> yeah. Another thing with this airplane, with the blow and the speed brake, is the way you fly it is differently in land to come to land. Yes. And you got your blow on. Okay, you're doing a blown a blown landing. So you don't want to fiddle with the thrust because if you're fiddling with the thrust, it'll be changing the blow. So it's very really hard to control the airplane. Yes. So you park the throttle at whatever your percentage more or less that you want, let's say around 70% then one, and then uh, you just fly the speed with speed brake. So you just, the throttle just stays there, you fly the speed with speed brake in and out, in and out. As you flare, you pop the whole speed brake, yeah. and when you touch down, you take the thrust off. Yes. So that's how you do on a carrier as well, touch down thrust off. Yes. With other airplanes, of course, you flare, thru, you know, you take the thrust off before you touch down. Mm. All other airplanes. Yes. This was the only one that was like it. So it had some unique things like that, you know, yeah. like the, the stick coming out of the dash, like a DKW. Yes. You know, other airplanes, the stick went into the floor. Yeah. That was unique. The speed tape, like an old Volvo speed tape, you know, was unique. It's just a very interesting, it's, it's, unique, it's just unique, beautiful unique. airplane. Well, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, tell me about the equipment that you guys used to attach to this massive aircraft. Well, in, in the beginning, they would use rockets. Uh, there's no guns, of course, you know, but then rockets, you've got to get too close. So, uh, when the museum was more sophisticated in uh, southern Angola, then we started to more standoff stuff. So, we had um, the Bombay there, you can fit quite a bit of uh, equipment in there, which is really nice. Yes. I don't know, I can't remember how many bombs on each station, but it uh, used to be 8,000 pounds of bombs. So, we. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess four in the Bombay and then you know two under each wing. Wow. But a thousand pound of bomb would just make a massive hole and um, yeah, not that effective. Yes. So then if you put two fifty kgs on that it's much, much more effective. So depending on what the target was, yes. depending on what you drop. One okay. round five kg even more effective, especially if you put air burst on. Yes. Uh, some delayed fuse, etc. So it was mainly a, a bombing aeroplane. You could yes. take a nuclear warhead. 
Um, we had uh, a bit of long range photograph, uh, photographic equipment uh, under the wing so you could do this very far um, photographs from a slant range with the guys could then get 3D pictures and identify stuff from. Uh, we fitted chaff and flares on there later. So those would be chaff and flare pods if someone locks onto you because we fitted a little early warning radar. Yes. If Sam or something locks onto you, you shoot your chaff and flares. Of course, if you did a pitch up for a target anyway, you would shoot chaff and flares so that the radar would lock onto that instead of locking onto you. Yes. Um, so that was all fitted. You know, that's about the kits I can think of at the moment. Some many of you know, a integrated all your Jeppesen, all your books, all your manuals, everything's on that screen. That's all integrates awesome. into the system. That's Fantastic. Really cool. um, the other thing that the airplane, they made a, a, a TV guided bomb that was developed at uh, Kentron or Arms Corps, wherever they developed it, but a local bomb, you know. So drop it, little wings would come out and then it would fly to the target. And they used it at the bridge of Peter Carnavale. Okay. That was dropped from a buck. And I think the Mirages could drop it as well, but that we dropped here as well. And then, it's pretty um, advanced for its time, you know. With, with the dropping of the bombs, you guys used to do the lobbing. Yeah, toss bombing. Oh, toss bombing, yeah. yes. So, yeah, toss bomb, I think someone called it very toss is maybe a more accurate term. So, yeah, you run in, uh, nav plans a route, uh, well, a hack point, as you call it, underneath the throttle, there's a little um, uh, button that you push up, called hack. And when you start to hack, then the gun sight starts to run down. Got a long range. And then it goes to a shorter range, and there's a little circle that runs down, runs down. About four nautical miles from the target, it tells you to pitch up. So I can head up display, and you just follow, you know, here goes a symbol, and you follow in the middle. The smoother you're following, obviously, the better, the more accurate it's going to be. And now I've some winds in as well, whatever he knows, to lay off for the bomb. Uh, bomb will then release. Uh, you pull up at about 4G, um, go down to 100 foot. 500 knots, pull up at 4G, bomb releases, it's automatic release, it, it decides when to release the computer. Yes. Um, they, someone says it's around 2,000 foot. You pull away, back to the ground, shoot your trough and flares, go away, and then your bombs fly into the target. Okay, well that's cool. Yeah, that's so really it's cool. about, about 7 and a half k's away. Sure. You're vulnerable for a while, I guess, as you're pitching up there. Yes. But obviously you are busy throwing your trough and flares, and also coming with surprise. you'd love to tell me. Uh, thanks oh. for having me. Oh, thank you very much for, for bring, being here. Bring Appreciate old, it. Old memories. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> Pleasant memories. That's awesome. Thank you very okay. much for coming through. Appreciate it Pleasure. so much. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be on my. I'll be on my.